Adam Rickett is a much-loved soap star, best known for portraying the role of Nick Tilsley in Coronation Street. Now, Adam lost £50,000 of his life savings due to a scammer pretending to be his bank. And also on the line with us is Jim Winters, who's the Director of Economic Crime at Nationwide. And they're both here with us to offer guidance on how to spot fraudulent investment opportunities. How are you both today? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. So really good, thank you. We'll start with you, Adam. What was your experience being scammed and how did it affect your family? So my experience was I I fell victim to what's called an APP, an authorised push payment scam, which is where somebody contacts you pretending to be your own bank and takes you on a roller coaster ride and eventually manages to swindle you out of money. Um, it wasn't like somebody just rang up out the blue and said, hello, my name's Bob, give us 50 grand. Yeah. It was a very sophisticated scam where they were able to clone the telephone number and text number of Barclays Bank. They were able to um, appear to be like people who actually worked for the Bar- Barclays Bank fraud department when you search for them on, on LinkedIn. They knew everything about me. They knew all my direct debits. They knew where money had been withdrawn out of a cash machine. You know, they knew everything. And... I also at no point thought I was actually making a transaction. Um, I was told by them they were taking my account offline and that the, all activity thereafter wouldn't actually be taking place. And they were going to, I was doing it as a way to actually help them to try to catch somebody who was acting fraudulent within the, within the bank itself. Um, it's saying it out loud. It sounds ridiculous and it sounds silly, but these entire scams are built around trying to put you under pressure and put you in a sense of panic. And, you know, you, you turn to the authoritative figure who's supposedly looking out for you. Um, unfortunately, that person is always the scammer. Um, the worst part for me was that I had to turn around to my wife and say that I've lost £50,000 of our money. Um, you know, it was I, I was embarrassed. I still am to this day, and I felt very shameful about it. Um, I'm also scared by it because the worst thing for me is that these scammers are so sophisticated that if they rang me up again tomorrow, I probably would still fall for it. Yeah. That's how good they are um and you know the only way i could have done anything different was just not to have engaged but to hung up and have rung my bank myself and you know asked them if what was going on was kosher that's really scary isn't it that you think you might fall for it again so jim how can you not fall for something like this because it sounds like these scammers are experts they are very professional they make millions of pounds a year out of this and they reinvest it into their staff and their techniques and their technology. So they're incredibly compelling. But the good news is there are three really uh, important warning signs that you can look out for if you think you're being subjected to an investment scam. So number one is unrealistic returns. So fraudsters often promise tempting returns. For example, a really high initial payback in a short space of time. So when it comes to investments, if it looks too good to be true, it nearly always is. The second is unexpected contact. So with Adam's case, he he had contact out of the blue. He wasn't expecting this. So if this is in relation to an investment opportunity, be aware. It might be a cold call. It, It might be an online approach by email or social media, or even by post or in person. And the last one that we ask people to look out for is time pressure. So scammers often use pressure tactics to panic their victims into moving quickly. So it could be a big bonus if you invest by a set date. They might tell you you've got an unbelievable once in a lifetime offer, but you can only have it for the next three days. Um, the, the thing is, if, you, if you're considering an investment, I mean, often these, these are thousands of pounds. The average claim that we see at Nationwide at the moment is £5,000. So if you're considering an investment, it's really important you do your research and take your time, especially if you've had an approach out of the blue. So you, you can, um, one of the most important things you can do is check that the firm you're dealing with is authorised by the Financial Conduct Authority by checking on their website. They have a really handy register there, which means you can check the details of the company you're dealing with. Do you think people maybe get a bit carried away? Because if something sounds too good to be true, as you say, it probably is. But people will think, ooh, I'm going to get loads of money. I'll have some of that without really thinking first. Well, yeah, the the current climate doesn't help. The the 
cost of living crisis is clearly having an impact. Our research suggested that just under a quarter of people indicate they would probably take more risk with their finance in order to make money. So that's the kind of context we're dealing with here. But fraudsters are opportunistic. They always take advantage of the current climate. The, the other thing that we're seeing at the moment are things like the, uh, the cost of living payments um, and the support provided by some of the utility companies. Fraudsters are taking advantage of that to send you kind of fake requests to share personal information. Now, Adam, I know you said earlier that you worry you would fall for a similar scam again, but do you think that hearing that advice and just generally having been a victim now, do you think that you would maybe be more cautious next time and maybe have been cautious if you've received similar calls? Yeah, I I think that's the whole point of this campaign. And, you know, kudos to to Nationwide for for spearheading it, is that what is needed more than anything else is education. Um, I had no concept of how sophisticated these scams were and how how detailed and in depth and how psychologically profiled I was being. Um, you know, the one thing these things that this campaign and what Nationwide are saying is just don't engage with these people. The second you engage with them, you will lose. The trick is to hang up the phone and get in contact with your own bank first. You know, they are the ones, you know, they're the ones who can tell you whether something is kosher or not. And, you know, if, if down the line it turns out that it's not, then, you know, Nationwide with their scammer, um, scammer scheme have already said, you know, if it turns out we say it's fine and it's not, then we'll give you your money back. You know, the the banks are putting their necks on the line with this. So, you know, put the trust in the people who actually have the knowledge and don't fall for the pressure tactics that are brought to bear against you. Your, Your best ally in the whole situation is time. It's taking the time to stop and contact the bank yourself. Well, where are we able to go to find out more information? First of all, you can go to nationwide.co.uk and just put uh, investment fraud into the search bar. There's absolute wealth of information available there for people who are concerned. Brilliant. Well, many thanks to you both for joining us today. It's been great having you on. Thanks very much, buddy.